I'm Peter Block and I'm in Chicago at the AHA annual meeting for On the Scene. To my left is Marco Zanotti. Uh, he's the chief of surgery at the VA in Boston, my old hometown many years ago. And it's always a pleasure to welcome somebody back from Boston. So Marco, this is a trial having to do with endoscopic vein harvest. Uh, initially, I, I sort of rolled my eyes and said, oh my God, really? But this is an important trial, it turns out. And it's critical because back in the old days, the first New England Journal of Medicine article said that it was really bad to do endoscopic harvest. And now we have a new randomized trial that you uh, were in that shows us something different. So tell me about the trial to start with, and then we'll discuss what it means for cardiac surgeons. Yeah, thank you. So the issue uh, that was uh, still on the table after uh, that uh, study was that uh, the best uh, uh, evidence comes from randomized control trials. So the authors of that study, uh, published in 2009, actually encouraged a definitive randomized control trial in order to answer that question. In addition, they acknowledged a major limitation was that uh, they had no information, but it was not collected part of the PREVENT4 trial, on the expertise who harvested the vein. And that's very important because uh, there is a steep learning curve to do an endoscopic harvest. It requires in our opinion, at least 100 cases, you have to have a track record of a low conversion rate and to have an established program. Okay, so the trial is endoscopic harvest of the veins versus open harvest and randomized. Took a long time to finish this trial, eight years. And what did you find? Let's get to the cut to the chase. So the study was uh, funded by the Cooperative Studies Program of the VA, and actually it was a very well-run study and very efficient. Only three years uh, in order to complete uh, the randomization from 2014 to 2017. From conception to end was eight years. The main finding is, uh, to our surprise, a little bit because we our hypothesis was on superiority we, uh, based on. Previous data, we thought open harvest would have come out ahead in terms of major adverse cardiac events. Instead, we found no difference in the major adverse cardiac events between the two. Okay, harvests. and yet the endoscopic harvest is a very much more difficult thing to do. Well, isn't that true? Yeah, we only allowed expert harvester providers into the study, so that is a caveat uh, in order to interpret the results. We also confirmed something that is already known: fewer infections, better uh, patient comfort and overall better wound healing in patients with endoscopic. That yeah. was known already. Yeah, but, and that's no surprise, is No it? surprise. Okay. So, no difference between the two. So all of a sudden, this business of open harvest sort of disappears if you are an expert endoscopic harvester. What does it mean uh, for all the cardiac surgeons that are out there? I mean, for the experts, it's straightforward, but many patients are operated by doctors and by surgeons who do very few cabbages per year. So what are you going to say to them? Let me uh, first uh, point to the major variability in practice between uh, Europe and North America. In North America, uh, providers already, and patients already voted with their feet. More than 90% uh, is done endoscopically in the US. But go to Europe, where, for instance, the National Institute of Clinical Effectiveness in the UK uh, took very seriously the safety data from the PREVENT trial, and uh, it's actually the prevalence is less than 20% overall. So practice may change in Europe. Uh, for the US, is probably the precision of the indication will increase uh, because uh, th this data is from a randomized control trial, adequately powered with low risk of bias. Okay, so how do you get expertise out to all of these little hospitals? That, that is the crux of the question. Thank you for uh, pointing. So, one thing I would like to come out of the study is a, a, a call to arms for paying attention to this conduit, which is still the mainstay of, of the practice. Um, perhaps establish some commonly and uh, agreed upon uh, standards for expertise and maintenance of expertise, and perhaps even uh, develop a CPT code, which um, amazingly we don't have right now. Those are all good ideas. I mean. I have to point out, which I think we overlooked, that these are hard clinical outcomes that showed no difference, right? We're not just talking about some soft outcome. This is the hardest uh, you can get. Exactly. And so the difference is there being no difference if you're an expert really makes a big difference. And um, in the long run, what is your hope? In the long run, is your hope that the endoscopic harvest will end up being the right thing to do? I believe that one of the conclusions is that in expert hands, uh, endoscopic harvest is probably the 
the best way to go, is the preferred approach in 2018. Now, we are moving in the modern uh, cabbage uh, to more multi-arterial, but it's unlikely that uh, we're going to shelf the Correct. vein graft for good. It yeah. will always be part of the mix. Okay, so for all the cardiac surgeons out there who are listening, uh, an important study, uh, the endoscopic harvest business is great if you're good at it, and the trick is to be, has to become good at it. You're already an expert, but uh, there are a lot of people out there who are not, a lot to learn, but uh, a very important study for coronary artery bypass graft surgery. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Peter.